Tim Tan. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. This is Finals 10, and today we'll be presenting about penetration debrief for next generation power, electric, and water. Next slide, please. Before we start, I would like to briefly introduce myself and my teammates as well, starting from the top left. That's me, Choi, project manager, Spencer, uh, web and critical infrastructure specialist, and Neha, uh, compliance and Windows specialist. From the bottom left to right, Ashish, Windows specialist, Rajiv, Linux specialist, and Emmanuel, web specialist. Next slide, please. So what's on the agenda for today? First of all, we're going to provide a big picture overview of what this engagement was, then talk about some of the, the metrics that we use to evaluate NGPW's infrastructure. And then we talk about some of the numbers relating with the statistics based on the engagement. Moving forwards, we talk about compliance, specifically NARC CIP, that's NARC Critical Infrastructure Protection. Then we're going to talk about some of the key findings and some suggestions to fix those findings. Next slide, please. Finals 10 was contracted with NGPEW in order to provide a second penetration test to assess risk of NGPEW's infrastructure. Finals 10, we specifically focused on the critical infrastructure because it is so important to NGPEW's business as well as physical security of many, many people out there. Our ultimate goal was to find and identify vulnerabilities, as well as provide a way to mitigate and respond to these vulnerabilities to make NGPW much more secure. Next slide, please. So in terms of metrics, we like to use the combination between technical metrics and human analytics in order to provide a holistic analysis of a vulnerability. So for example, next slide, please. For technical metrics, we like to use the CVSS scoring, that is Common Vulnerability Scoring System, uh, to evaluate the critical technical criticality of a vulnerability. We then mix or combine that with our in-house risk matrix that helps us to convert that uh, risk technical risk into the context of the business. Next slide, please. For actually fixing stuff and getting things done, we like to use the prioritization metrics to help NGPEW to identify which findings to focus first. So we use the notation of critical, short-term, long-term, and eventually. Next slide, please. So we wanted to first outline the revalidation of vulnerabilities found in the previous engagement. And we found, our team found that over 57% of these past vulnerabilities had been remediated or partially remediated in the most recent engagement, which is a testament to NGPEW's commitment to improving cybersecurity posture. Next slide, please. So during this most recent engagement, we have grouped the, find, the vulnerabilities that had not been remediated, as well as some new discovered findings by risk, as you can see, these were the, all the vulnerabilities found group by risk. Next slide, please. The vulnerabilities also ranged, uh, had a wide range over NGPEW's environment, most being in the network services and web applications. Next slide, please. Based on the findings found during the engagement, Final Send believe NGPW's current security is deviated from the NERC CIP compliance requirements. Although Final Send is not a NERC CIP compliance auditing organization, but there are some things that look concerning to us and might possibly lead to consequences for NGPW. During the engagement, we found vulnerabilities that pointed to the deviation from these two SIPs shown on the screen. Our team suggests NGPW use a compliance assessment tool to perform a comprehensive self-assessment. NERC also has a risk-based compliance monitoring and enforcement program, which helps companies assess their risk and evaluate their compliance. In the events that NGPW decide they are in violation of the NERC CIP compliance, we recommend self-reporting the violations to NERC. NGPW can also consult some third-party audit companies that are experts in NERC CIP compliance audits and can suggest a proper course of action to NGP, that NGPW needs to take to become compliant in NERC CIP. Next slide, please. 
During finals 10 testing phase, we noticed a few services that were not set up properly. Due to mis misconfiguration, an attacker is able to use public exploits to gain and or disclose information about your internal workflow. The impact of such misconfigured, misconfigured services uh, is that it's critical because an attacker is able to take over those services and that can negatively impact NJPEW. Finance 10 suggests that this findings, findings should be medicated first because of such critical impact they have on NJP, NJPEW. Uh, Next slide, please. Thank you, Emmanuel. We found four high priority findings that were caused as a direct result of poor password management. We found instances of password reuse across multiple accounts, which allowed us to access multiple systems. We also found instances of weak passwords, which we could easily guess using our automated tools. Malicious actors can easily leverage both these points to compromise multiple NGPW accounts and gain further access to NGPW assets. As Neha mentioned, this results in NERC CIP violations for NGPW. We recommend NGPW improve their password hygiene by, as an immediate measure in the short term, purge the weak and reused passwords and employ the use of strong unique passwords and control their lifecycle using a password manager. In the long term, we recommend implementation of multi-factor authentication and single sign-on infrastructure. Next slide, please. The next category of findings fall under the improper access control. Under this, Final 10 found a total of four findings which have a medium and long-term prioritization. Final 10 commends NGPU, NGPW for implementing remediations from our previous engagement and securing access from uh, external networks. But during the engagement, once the credentials were provided by NGPW, Final 10 were able to either access critical systems or gain system sensitive information from them, which allowed us to compromise other systems on the network. Some systems just had a basic password authentication and as said by Rajiv, these passwords are not up to the current industry trends. And in some, also in some instances, there was no control mechanism present for the critical infrastructure. This increases the threat landscape for NGPW from malicious actors from within the organization. Since these malicious actors are already inside the system and are trusted by the system, their activities will be hard to detect. Final stand would also like to point out that Findings under this category deviate from the NERC CIP compliance and suggest that NGPEW step up their access control methods to secure the network. Next slide, please. So what does this mean for NGPEW as a company? So while some firewalls were put in place on critical infrastructure, uh, some, some infrastructure still lacked proper access control, which would allow an unauthorized threat actor to both gain access to these systems, which would compromise the confidentiality and integrity of the systems, as well as um, the possibility of some crashes or, or um, disruption to these services, which would uh, negatively impact business revenue, as well as endanger NGPEW's customers um, because of the critical, the nature of the sensitivity of the critical infrastructure. Uh, compromised employees' accounts would then, could possibly lead to an unauthorized threat actor gaining a foothold into a network and then possibly leading to further attacks such as ransomware um, or exfiltration of sensitive data, which again would negatively um, impact business revenue, cause significant financial loss. And, the, um, and finally, uh, deviations from NERC CIP may have fines associated with it. Next slide, please. So what are the next steps for NGPW? Uh, finals 10, we recommend to first do an internal audit of NERC CIP compliance with either an automated self-assessment tool or by allocating resources to a um, compliance department of, of NGPW to go over these compliance regulations or third-party outsource. Uh, we also recommend to patch and update outdated systems uh, regularly. However, we understand that being due to the nature of NGPEW having a lot of legacy systems, that these patches might not all be able to occur constantly. So to rather uh, group these patches and updates on a biannual or annual basis to uh, minimize operational downtime. And finally, implementing access control on critical infrastructure uh, by allocating budget towards development teams or third party companies uh, to implement authentication on these critical infrastructures. Thank you, next slide. 60 seconds.
So that's about sums it up. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll take the questions today, right now. Thank you, Tim. This is Bob Kelka, Chairman of the Board. Um, a very clear presentation. What I'd like to get a sense from, uh, from you is, with these recommendations, how does that help me in my relative risk profile? In other words, where am I today relative to the other companies you're working with in this space? and the norms in the industry, and after these recommendations, uh, what level of relative security posture will we be? Yeah, sure, I, I can take that one. Sure. Uh, so, yep. we, you know, we would not like to divulge, you know, specifics on other clients. However, I can tell you as far as um, in, in different other cr critical infrastructure companies, um, a lot of them do have, because they're using legacy systems and protocols are, again, legacy, there's not security built in mind. And so by implementing these access controls on top, we are seeing that becoming an industry standard as we sort of migrate to newer hardware and systems that can support protocols developed with security in mind. So by implementing such access controls from a critical infrastructure perspective, um, this would greatly improve your security posture to match industry standard. Okay, thank you, Spencer. Yeah. Thank you.